Hey guys, SC here. Today I'm going to show you how to use a couple of different programs in order to change up your audio setup a bit on your PC. Using this type of setup, you're going to be able to have a lot more fine tuning and control over each individual component within your system. You'll be able to shape the audio for each and every component. You'll be able to route each component to multiple different destinations or no destinations, depending on how you want to set it up. So it gives you a lot more control, which is good in things like streaming because you want to be able to maybe hear some sounds, but not others. Or maybe you want to be able to hear certain sounds, but you don't want them to come in, coming out on your stream. So to do that, we've got a couple of different programs that I'm going to go through here. The first one is the one you see on the screen right now. It's called Voice Meter Banana. The second one done by the same entity is called Virtual Audio Cable. And that's one that works more a little bit behind the scenes. And we're going to go through that a little bit later. Now, the reason I go through this is because there's a bunch of different how to's and a little bit of snippets of information on various YouTube sites, various uh, bulletin boards, things like that. But you kind of have to piecemeal them together. You've got to look at all of them and put them together in order to come up with a setup similar to what I have going on here. The closest thing that I've found to what I'm making here, and I'm going to put it up here right now, is a YouTube video by a guy that calls himself Jess Everything that almost mirrors what I'm about to show you today. There's a few minor differences, and I'll go through those minor differences as we go. If you want, Check out his video. Definitely, if you like it, give it a thumbs up for him. Let's give credit where credit's due here. Without finding this video, I might not, I might not have been able to come up with the setup that I have right now. All right? So, let's go through the very basics first. Before we even get into any of this stuff, update your drivers. Go through each component within your system. Make sure all the drivers are up to date, because if we start having problems, that's going to be the first thing everybody tells you, update your drivers. So if you go through that now and just get it over with, we don't have to deal with it later on and you might head off potential problems before they even start. That being said, let's assume at this point you've updated your drivers, you've restarted the computer to make sure nothing's going to blow up before we begin, and everything's going good. All right. Now, next thing, let's download the components we need. Do that. You're going to use a couple of links that I'm going to put in the description. But to give you an idea on what it looks like, this is Voice Meter Bananas page. It's going to, once you see a page that looks like this, you're in the right place. You're going to go about halfway down until you see, well, look for orange. These download things right here. Download the EXE. You can work with the zip. That's out of, out of the scope of this. To make things simple for, for most people, download the EXE. Just install it, work with that. Virtual audio cable is the same page. It's actually just a different tab, bananas over here, but it's gonna look like this. Again, same page, same type of setup. Go down and click on this download link. Go ahead and do that. Install both of those. And then again, like you did with the drivers, restart the computer. Make sure through each step of this, when you install things or when you make major changes, that you restart the computer each time. If you don't, there's no guarantee that everything is going to work out perfectly. To be honest, there's no guarantee at all. But this minimizes troubles. You know, so if you don't and you come up with problems, that's again, right up there with updating drivers. That's one of the first things people are going to tell you. Restart your damn computer. All right. Let's assume we got that out of the way. We've restarted the computer. Nothing's nuked. Everything's good. You know, just start it up one time. Start up voice meter. Make sure that it comes up. No errors, etc., etc. Once it does that, put it, get, you know, set it aside for a minute because we've got other things to do. <clears throat> In order to minimize troubles, just like what I said with restarting the computer with your audio setup, we're going to go to a couple of different places and we're going to change your advanced audio settings to all be the same format, the same frequency, that sort of thing. I'll explain that in a minute. First things first, we're going to go into the control panel. Different versions of Windows, different ways of doing that. But every version of Windows 
can do, can use the run dialog box. So you can go over here to the start button here, right click and hit run. The other option is to hold down your Windows key on your keyboard and while you're holding it, press the R key. Boom, comes right up. Now you'll notice I already have it in here, but the type, the thing we want to type in here is just the word control. No dots, no program endings, no, just the word control. Do that, hit OK. Boom, we're in the control panel. Once we're in the control panel, go down, go to sound, click on sound. And this will show you your playback, your recording things. Those are the two tabs you're going to work with. And it shows you all the things that are installed on your system. Go into each one that you're going to map through voice meter because, you know, you're going to want to do that. Like, for example, these speakers, double click it, go to the advanced tab. Once you go to the advanced tab, you want to be able to change all of these default formats for each and every item for the same property. Now you'll notice, like for example, with these speakers, some devices cannot be changed like this one. I can't change it at all. 16 bit, 48,000 Hertz quality, which to be honest is fine for most things. If I was really worried about it, I'd get a new set of speakers. You know, something that's going to have a little bit more control. But to be honest, that's fine. And my speakers work, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're just going to work with that. Each of the other devices that I go into now, I'm going to change to that format. So, we're, in this case, you're going to hit OK. I hit Cancel because I already did it there. This is my, uh, my microphone interface, Focusrite USB. Double click it. Advanced. You'll see that I put in there. 16-bit. 48,000 Hertz. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want there. Do that. Hit OK. Do this for each item, including the items that you just downloaded. You'll notice we have new ones there. Go into those. Double click it. Go to advanced. 16 bit. 48,000. And so on and so forth. Each and every one of them. Not only in the playback column, but in the recording column and what, as well. We're going to go into each one of those. Advanced, two channels, 16 bit, 48,000. Change them all to be the same, whichever one you want to use. Now, if you can't do that, if there's one out of the, out of the setup that has a weird, you know, uh, default format, like for example, this one I have here from my Droid Cam which is another program that's outside of the scope here. But if I double click this, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't really have many, many options. Don't worry about it. Just remember that as you're going through it, if I suddenly have a problem with this, I can troubleshoot it, but it may have something to do with this. And if I can't change it, I can't change it. That's all there is to it. Now, mind you, I don't use this much, but I'm just giving it to you as an example. Make all of them the same as long as you can. But if there's one really weird one, don't freak out because it's not the end of the world. So again, each of these other ones, advanced, two channels, 16 bit, 48,000, etc. Got it. Okay. Once we have all of those set, hit okay. If you have voice meter up, we need to, we need to shut it down for the moment. So to do that, have it up. Click on the menu button up here at the top right, and then go to shut down voice meter. Obviously, I'm not going to do it right now or else you wouldn't be hearing me, and that would be bad for this tutorial. But you go ahead and do it, shut it down, and then it'll be out of the way. There's a couple more places, two more places, in fact, we need to double check for, to make sure those audio settings are the same. We just set all of the control panel settings in Windows. However, Voice meter, voice meter banana, and virtual audio cable also have an internal program in order to change its sample format or, or its default format sounds. So we're going to go into the start menu here. We're going to go down to V. We're going to go to VV Audio. Open it up, and you'll notice these control panels I see that we have here. We're going to work with each one. First, we're going to you know. It doesn't matter which one you open first, which, you know, you just got to do them both. You'll notice here, two channels, 48,000, 16-bit. That's what we want. 
input. I'm not using this program right now because the thing I would run through it isn't running at the moment. So you're not going to see that there. You may or may not. What you want to worry about is up here. See this internal SR? You want that to match that down here at the output. So if it's not, say for some reason it's like at some ungodly 98, 96,000 hertz or something like that. You're going to go into options. And you're going to hit this. And you're going to set the internal sampling rate to whatever you want it to be. In this case, 48,000 hertz. Now, 48,000 and 44, 1,000 are common ones that mo most people use. If you're going to go for, oh my God, studio level recording, one, you're probably not using this tutorial. You're probably using the hardware stuff. But if you are, you'd go for something higher, like 96,000. Again, stick with what we set everything for. So in this case, like I said, 48,000. That's good. That's the virtual audio cable. Close that. Again, go to here. Go down the V, VB Audio, and that was the one I just did there. Now we're going to go here. And same thing. 48,000, 48,000. You'll notice both of them are running right now because this runs through voice meter and it's actually get, getting stuff. Check your thing, check your SR here. Go to options. Set your internal sampling rate to match that SR number that you've got set right there, 48,000. Once you do that, close all your windows, restart your computer. Again, <clears throat> they, those, these changes don't take effect until you restart it. Restart it, and then we'll double check it. As long as nothing blows up, we can continue. Now that we've set everything to be the same default format, which will minimize problems later if, if something goes wrong and we want to start troubleshooting. Once we got that out of the way, it's time to work with voice meter itself. So we pull this up. Now we got to tell voice meter what each input is going to go to here. And then on the other side here, what each output everything's going to go to. You see, we have three hardware inputs, three hardware outputs, and then we have two virtual inputs. I'll go over those in a minute. First things first, let's set our inputs. You'll notice in my case, the first one here says Focusrite USB. That's my microphone that I'm using right here with you. Left click on it, whatever it says here. And you'll see that there's a myriad of different choices you can choose. These are the di not only the different devices, but different driver types for those devices. Now, the only thing I can tell you is the normal ones you'll see are WDM and MME. Sometimes you'll see KS. MME was the first type of driver that came out from most Windows systems, most modern Windows systems. We're not going all the way back to like 95, 98, that sort of thing. That's not, this is just Windows 7, you know, maybe XP. I haven't really done XP, so I don't know if this works with it. 7 onwards. MME is the first one. WDM is the current one that, that everybody uses. And from what I've been told, WDM has the, least amount of latency of the two. KS is another type of driver that I'm told works well, but can have some issues, especially when it comes to devices trying to share it or things of that nature. When in doubt, avoid it. Let's stick with WDM and MME. Now you might, in some cases, if you have a high level sound card or a high level input device, there's another type of driver here called ASIO. If you have it, and if it works, use it. That'll give you the lowest amount of latency, so there's there, as little delay as possible between when my lips are flapping and when you actually hear them. In this case, I don't. Oh well, let me you know, move on. I'm going to choose the WDM device for this. If you click one of these types of devices and you suddenly, once we get started hearing things, it's cutting out, it's giving all sorts of issues, it sounds robotic, whatever. Switch to the other ones, to MME, and then try again. Remember when you switch to restart everything, just to make sure. If one cuts out and the other one doesn't, ta-da, there you go, use that one. You know, we could troubleshoot this all day, but if this works and it's gonna add, what, 50 millisecond delay? you're probably not going to notice it. 
If it gets too bad, then we can work on it later on. But, you know, I'm kind of digressing here. Set your input, set the type of driver you want, and it'll go to, it, it and will have it go to hardware input one. In my case, like I said, that's to my microphone. Hardware input two is my droid cam microphone. And I said it was, I wasn't going to get into it, but droid cam allows me to use my cell phone as my webcam because I don't actually own a webcam. It has an audio built into it. So I just went ahead and set the audio to go to hardware input two. The audio for this sounds awful. So I will almost never use it. That's why it's muted down here. However, if I, for whatever reason, choose to use it, if I want to grab the phone and take it with me to talk to people while I'm making pizza or whatever, it's available. Set it off to the side. No biggie. I got it all set up. Next one. Hardware input three. Now, you can set it to whatever you want. Just like in either one of these. Set it to whatever devices you intend to use. In this case, hardware input three is where we're using our virtual audio cable. And you'll see I've got it down here on MMA or MME to cable output. And you might be thinking output. This is an input device. Why are we setting it to output? Because we're f these types of programs are, think of them as like filters. We're running everything into this filter so it changes and then going out of that filter into whatever other program we want. Well, the virtual audio cable is doing the reverse for us. It's actually routing some other program here. In this case, I'm using it for Discord. <clears throat> Discord is for now my main chat program. So I want a good degree of control with it and a specific set of controls to work with it as well. So I'm routing it to here using my cable, my virtual audio cable. Do that. We'll come back to it later. That's your inputs. That's your hardware inputs. Now let's go to your hardware outputs over here. So A1, A2, and A3. Pretty much self explanatory. If you click on A1, just like with hardware input one, you'll get a series of different drivers to use. You'll notice now that I have a ASIO as an option for my focus right. If you have no ASIO options and you end up running into a program that really requires them, look up this ASO for all. It'll give you, it'll help you out. But in this case, with this particular program, we can choose any one of them we want. So to make things nice and simple, I chose MME and I just ran it through my speakers. Once you do that, click on it, that'll go away, etc., etc. Go to A2. In this case, my Focusrite audio interface has an input and an output. I could technically use it as a USB sound card if I wanted to. My speakers sound fine. I'm not going to change the setup. However, maybe I want to make it available for something else if I add a set of hardware later on or something like that so I can route it through, you know. So I just went ahead with A2 and set it for the Focusrite USB. Now, if my speakers decide to go, you know, belly up, I can use this instead. So click it, set it for whatever you want to set it in your system and move on. A3, again, same thing. If you have a third output that you're going to, another set of speakers or a USB headset of some sort, something like that, you can set that here. I don't really have anything that I'm doing, so I don't have it set here. Another thing I'll mention, but it should be self-explanatory. If you click this and it's the wrong one and you want to change it, you can either change it here, or if you don't want to use it at all, just hit this thing that says remove device selection. Done and done. Now, now we have set our hardware devices, both inputs and outputs. Now, what the hell are these things, these virtual inputs? I'll tell you. This first one here, the voice meter VAIO. That's going to be your main output. All of your desktop sounds you're going to set up to run through this. And this, once we do that, allows us to, you know, change all your stuff here. You can work with bass if you decided you wanted to up the bass. We don't. If you wanted, for whatever reason, directional sound, so it sounds like it's coming from a specific direction, awesome. You can do that here. But this is going to be your main desktop sounds. Keep that in mind. This next one over here 
voice meter aux. Voice meter aux is what we're going to connect to our chat programs, whatever it is, be it Discord, be it for whatever reason, let's say I, you know, I'm playing Overwatch, I set this to my voice in Overwatch, yeah. and that'll give us, again, it'll separate everything. That way, if I'm, say, running a pro, you know, doing a video with OBS, and I don't want people listening to my, you know, my friends or my, you know, other people that are connected to Discord screaming and dropping cherubs from the sky, I can simply disconnect this and just uncheck it here. These are B1 and B2. If they're not lit up on a specific interface, you're not going to hear them. So by unchecking B2 in this main interface, they're not going to be recorded in OBS. I, but I can do, but I can hear them through here because B2 is being routed to my outputs. So I can hear them through my speakers. I can hear them through a headset if I hook it up to my uh, focus right interface. And right now, they are running through, through B1 so everybody could hear them too. If they start giving me trouble, I just unclick it. Boom. Done. And when I undo it, nobody's going to hear it. That's it. You know, th those are your two B and A and B and virtual interfaces. And there is also an A and B output as well. You see these under master section, under B1, B2, you'll see that both of them are running. If for whatever reason I decided to uncheck B2, you'll now notice that nothing is working here. They're not hearing it. That's it. They're done. If I decide I want to talk to them again, I check that. All's well again in the world. I can talk to them. So that's, these buttons are how you're going to route everything here you know my, my my main microphone i'm running through b1 and b2 so it's running through the desktop sound so obs can can record it and it's running through my chat interface so if i'm talking on discord or skype or whatever it may be people are going to hear me through that you can do that through each of these and it'll give you a very fine grain control over what's being routed to where now I've gone over these buttons, these A's and B's. Some of these other ones are pretty, you know, self-explanatory. Mono. I don't have two mics. I don't have a stereo mic. So, obviously, I'm setting it as a mono source. If it's not set, then it's only running through one channel. That's why I do that. Solo. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what that does. I've hit it a couple of times. It doesn't seem to change much with, with what I'm doing. It obviously does something, but I just haven't read the damn manual to figure it out yet. Obviously, I'm not a sound expert here. So if somebody wants to cut right in at the end of the video, show me a better way on how to do this, by all means, I'll go ahead and change it up and I'll put your name in there. You'll be famous. How about that? Mute? Pretty self-explanatory. You hit the button, you don't hear anything. That's all there is to it. And that's the same with each of these channels. You'll see over here on the virtual channels, instead of mono, there's a different thing here called MC. That is that if you have if you have an audio setup that has center channels, you can hit that to mute the center channel. Now, why you do that? Not quite sure. However, there it is. You know, other than that, solo and mute, same as over here on these buttons here. <clears throat> these little dials up at the top here. They help out with microphone-based setup. This thing here, they call it a comp. I call it an, uh, an amplifier. Because as you run the numbers up, you'll notice this goes higher. You can hear me more. However, you're also going to hear whatever sound, you know, background sounds are in the background. If I have artifacts, if I have something that I filtered out, nine times out of ten, if I up this, you're going to hear it anyway. So I don't use it. Back down to zero we go. The other side. The other side is a noise gate. And I'm sure a lot of you that are looking at this know what a noise gate is. But I'm going to go over it anyway. As I raise this number, it's going to cut out a degree of sound based on how loud those sounds are. So if I, for some reason, didn't want you to hear nine tenths of what I said, I could jack this up to say...
But you'll notice once that number was jacked up, you didn't hear it. I could adjust that to where you wouldn't hear the microphone until whatever sounds it hit, it reached a certain level or higher. And then it would only, you know, this microphone would only kick in when it reached those decibel levels. Afterwards, once it goes back down, you wouldn't hear it again. This is a good way to cut out a noisy environment if you can't do it any other way. Or if you just want to set your mic to be used all, at all times and you don't want to hear me say, you know, hear, you don't want to, you don't, yeah. You don't want people hearing you say whispering to your wife to go get you something, whatever. That's how you set that up. So a gate can help you out a lot, and especially if you don't want to do that whole push the talk thing, if you just want to talk and it works. This particular gate, in my experience, when I use it, it cuts off the end of my sentences. And that's why I don't use it because it's annoying. Sometimes it'll even cut off the beginning of my sentence. And that's no matter how I set that up. And there's no other settings besides that to really adjust it and get it to work properly. So I use a different gate that's part of a plugin that I'll be showing you in the next video after I do this one. And that'll in that video will help you how to, you know to shape it even more than what you could do here, which is actually quite a bit. <clears throat> now I've gone through the buttons here. I've gone through this. Fader game. That's pretty much self-explanatory. You push it up, it's gonna be louder. You push it down, it's not gonna be as loud. I've got mine all the way up because I have a cheap $22 speaker and after getting rid of all of the background sounds and other things that were annoying me in the speaker, you can't hardly hear anything. Okay, so I just jack it up. Adjust yours to whatever level you see fit. All of this has been explained. Now we go up here to IntelliPan. This is one of the reasons I actually really like voice meter because I can use this to adjust my microphone in a, in, on, a, on a moment's notice. Normally, like I said, I have a cheap mic and it makes me sound horrible. Just to give you an idea, let me turn this off. I'll double click it. And this, this right here, is what I sound like without using any of these changes. Not pretty, is it? So, if I want to sound like I have a pair, then I'm going to have to do something. Now, I could go into an EQ and adjust a whole bunch of different stuff, or I just grab this little thing right here, and I move it right over. And all of a sudden, boom, I sound like a man again. Now, you can adjust this however you want. You can go this way. You can go all the way down here where it sounds like this. Or we can do this like that. Or we can go way over here, make it sound like this. And you get the idea, back and forth. But I tend to like it right here. It might be a little too bassy for other people's tastes, but you're not the one running the program right now. I am, so. That's IntelliPan. Now, there are different things with IntelliPan. To go through the different options, right click. Now, you notice we have a modulation thing. This bugs the hell out of me. But somebody might like to use it. You can hit it. You can make yourself sound oh so funky. Just doing all of the effects. I have no idea why you would ever use it, but it's available. I don't like it, so I turn it off. Double click. It's off. Done. Right click one more time. Position. That's a lot like these other little positional audio things on the virtual inputs. You grab it. And it'll make it sound like your voice is coming from a different position. Again, not really useful for me. Double click, it's off. You guys may find a use for it, in which case, by all means. But definitely this voice one helps out a lot, especially with cheaper microphones or bad voices. You know, might be a little bit of both in my case. The same can be said for each of these hardware inputs. They all have... IntelliPan options, and you can work with each of them. You'll notice in the Droid Cam that I've set mine way down here because, like I said, it's awful as far as its input. It's actually worse than this, and that's saying something. Cable output. I'm already going to be processing this and sending it to Discord in a process manner, so I'm not going to change the settings here. If I wanted even more bass, or if I wanted modulation or something like that, I'd work with it here. I don't, so we're not going to. So, that's all of those options. Let's go over here to this master section. 
Each of these refers to the outputs. So if we're going, let's say for example, this isn't cutting it for you. You can adjust treble, yes, you can adjust mid, your bass, but that's it. You really don't have any control over what specific bands you want to work with. It's not a full EQ. Huh? Oh, we got that covered. We have an EQ over here. We would just hit this, turn it on, and it works. Well, hold on. How do we set the damn thing? That's covered too. Instead of, instead of just clicking it, right click it. Boom. Now we have an EQ to work with. And I've got them all set to uh, just be flat at the moment. But let's say you had an annoying noise that was coming from a ceiling fan or something like that that was in your background, in your audio, and it was so loud that it was affecting you. Because trust me, that's exactly what's happening to me now. In that case, you would come over here, make sure that your first band is on, set it for whatever it is. Let's say it's 120 hertz. You would set it for, well, as close as you get to 120 hertz. It's one of the things I don't like about this particular EQ is that you can't just set it for a very specific fre frequency. You just got to roll it and see how close, exact you can get. Well, let's say that's good enough. 122.4. All this, you know, we just want to cut out all that sound on that particular band. We don't want to mess with it. You know, we could. We could sit here and go up. We can go down. You'll see the change down here. But to get rid of it completely, this second button right here, notch, boom, done. It's going to get rid of as much as it can of that particular frequency. Now you'll notice it's a curve. So there's other frequencies being affected as well. We can take this Q dial right here and adjust it to either narrow that curve or to really open it up. You know, that way you not only get that, but let's say you got a little bleed off on, you know, frequencies to the left and right of it. We can adjust that as well. In my case, I don't. So double click that, double click that, bring it back up here. And you can do that with each individual thing. If I want to do it there and there and there, you'll notice everything is done. That's the EQ portion of it. You can affect all channels or just specific channels. You know, you have the ability to adjust this how you see fit. Now I said I had, there was one of the issues I had with this particular EQ, that right there. The other one that I don't have is there's no visual representation here of what sounds are on what frequencies. So I've either got to bring in an external monitor to be able to see which frequencies are, are affecting me, or I've got to do guesswork. And I don't feel like doing guesswork. So even though it's a powerful EQ, unless you have an external way of monitoring the, you know, your signals, you may want to use a plugin or something like that for that for your EQ. In this case, I don't use it, so it goes away. I don't have it engaged. There it is. So little tape recorder at the top will help you with testing everything. Once you have everything here set up the way you want, you hit record, you talk a little bit, you hit stop, and then when you hit play again, it'll just play back that last clip you just made. So it's a good way to test everything and make sure everything works. Now, I forgot something and I'm going to go into it right now here. See this menu button? Hit this. Go down to where it says system settings. When we open up system settings, you'll notice we have a sampling right here. We ha tend to have it up here too, which that's just to show things. Right here, you want to change it if it's different than what you're using normally. It's not in my case, so I'm not going to change it. So change that to match your sample rate. Forgot that one. I apologize, guys. And then you'll be good. Um, that's just a quick rundown of what I use with voice meter banana. There is a whole lot of other things you can do with this. There's this whole V band thing where you can actually set up other devices in other places to stream in and you work with it or you stream out those devices. So say you have six different PCs that you're running audio equipment on and you want this to go to them. You can do it here. I've done, I haven't got in, gotten into it yet. I don't plan to anytime soon, but if it, that's something that sounds good to you, 
by all means, check it out. You may be able to use it to your advantage in, in something that you can't do right now. That's all of these settings. Now that we have a rough idea on how to set that up, and we've hit our buttons to tell which device goes where, now we need to tell Windows what to do. Because right now, yes, I can set this up, but Windows is going to default to whatever it wants. So let's just minimize that real quick. We're going to go back to our sounds, which, like I said, run, control, and from the control panel, hit sounds. We could have done this earlier, but I think it's better that we do it now. Now we need to set our default devices. So normally, I would have the, if I didn't have voice meter and all that, my speakers would be the default device because, hey, I want to hear things. That's all there is to it. We're going to go down here, and we're going to tell voice meter to be the default device. Right click. Right now, you know, it doesn't say it, but it would say set as default device. Click that. You're good to go. You'll see that little check mark right here. Since voice meter aux is our fallback chat channel, you know, if I'm using Skype or something like that, I don't want it coming through the same hardware input that Discord uses because I want to be able to, to adjust each one of those separately. Right click that, set as default, it'll, it doesn't say it here, but set as default communications device. Now, you should have a little, you know, handset button there. So this one's your default, this one's your default chat. That's exactly how we want it. That way, if there are some programs that cannot be changed, that cannot be modified, they'll just work. They'll work through voice meter by default. Go over to recording. Do the same thing. The voice meter output is going to be your default device. Once you do that, you see the checkbox there. Again, go to the aux output, set it for the default communications device. We want these two devices to be the defaults on each tab. Now, as some of you, I know in my case, I also had an HDMI that went to my monitors. You know, a lot of you will have that. Some people use them, and that's fine. I don't. So the problem I kept having was, I would set these, but when I restarted the computer, for some reason, the, the monitors decided to take over and become the default. Well, since I don't even use them and I don't have anything hooked up to them, that's annoying. So if you have that problem, and a lot of you won't, but I'm just saying if you do, get out of the sound here, and we're going to go back to the back over here. You can either right click on the um, start button here, or you can hit Control X. I don't think it's Control X. Maybe it's Win X. There you go. Windows X. Hold down the Windows key and hit X. See? Well, I screw up too. From there, you're going to go to Device Manager. When you click on the Device Manager, this window is going to come up. And you're going to go down to Sound, Video, and Game Controllers. It's the same thing no matter what version of Windows. You'll notice I have two NVIDIA devices. I don't use them, so I disabled them. That's what, that's what that little symbol next to them is. In your case, let's say I'll do it with focus right so you can actually see the option. Right click on the device, and you'll see right here where it says disable device. Now make sure you disable it. Do not uninstall it. If you want to install it, it's just going to come right back when you restart the computer. Disabling it makes sure that it stays there, but it's not being used and it's not getting in the way of your setup. So if you run into that problem where other devices that you're not using keeps trying to take control, that's one way of dealing with it. All right. Now that we have our default devices, default devices, there we go. Default devices set up. We have voice meter set up where we've got everything where we want. You know, the stuff we want to run to our main input, we've got on V1. The stuff we want to run over to our chat output is B2. We've got all that set up. We're just about done. The last thing I'm going to show you is the chat program, like for example, Discord. So in my case, I don't even have it on yet. Let's just hit that button. It's going to take a minute to start up because I'm not the fastest thing here. Once it starts up, you're going to go down here and you're going to hit the user settings button, which looks like a gear. We hit that, we go to voice. 
you'll vote you'll notice my input device is going to be the same for all chat programs voice meter aux output my output device is going to be my cable input sounds weird doesn't it why the hell would i do that well i could set this to be in my microphone and it would work okay no problem however it would not be shaped i would still have that tinny sound without any sort of modifications by running it through voice meter first and sending it here like this my modified voice with all the changes and the gate will go through discord and i won't have to worry about it everything will sound exactly the way i want it to sound which is the purpose of this setup to shape it to your desire before you send it to any program the output device we're routing it back through voice meter. This device can be muted and everything separate from any other chat program. That way I have more control over it when I'm doing things like streaming or recording, etc., etc. This gives me more, more shaping and more control over everything that I do. And that's exactly what we want. If you have a chat program or something, some other type of program that you're Wanting to set up that way, by all means, run it exactly the way I just showed you through voice meter in that fashion so you know exactly what, you know how everything is, what you want to do with it, and et cetera, et cetera. Everything here is set up. Last thing, same as the first thing when I talked about the video, restart it. Restart the computer, make sure it comes back up. Nothing blows up. We don't want it being nuked. As long as there's no errors or anything, you're done. Now remember, we have now set up voice meter to be your main, your main interface for audio. So we're not going to go over here to sounds anymore to, to change a bunch of stuff. We're going to stay right here. If you want to mute something or raise or lower the volume, you do it here in voice meter banana. You don't do it in Windows itself. Now that you've done that, play with it. Listen to the different things you can do with it. Route everything the way you want it. Now you have everything set up. How you want to set it up is up to you entirely. But you've got it up and running, and the basics are there. Now that's this video. The next video is going to talk about running something else through Voice Meter Banana in a different way that'll actually shape your audio for each program even further than what you have here. It's a little more advanced. Not everybody needs it. For most people, this is enough. And I hope I've helped you out a little bit. Maybe this helps out. If you like it, if it works for you, make sure to do two things. One, hit the thumbs up on my video. Send me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you don't like the way, you know, way I said something, say it. I might change it. You know. The other thing, these programs, Voice Meter Banana and Virtual Audio Cable, they say it in the web page, but I want to point it out further. They're free, yes, but they're considered donationware. If you like them and they work for you, go in and donate to the man for his work. He worked hard to put all this stuff together. There's not many of us, if any, that could do everything here that he has. The fact that he's done it is great, but we want to pay the man a little bit so he keeps working on it. So, if, you know, if he wants to add new features, stuff like that, awesome. You know, just give credit where credit's due. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. My next video for plugins will be coming up soon. Till then, enjoy.